Hey guys, in this episode, we're gonna be looking behind the curtain of the real estate world, last minute tips and tricks uh, right before a home hits the market. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to The Buzz Coffee and Real Estate. Today we're gonna to be talking about realtor perspectives behind the curtain. Let's see what we do when your house is gonna hit the market. Kind of the last minute tips and tricks, um, which you know, we're, we're, we want to have everything in place. We did a for sale by owner version of this. And just kind of so you know, yeah. so much of that is handled by an agent, but just yeah. making sure that it's all streamlined. So down to the kind of lockbox that we use. We've yeah. gotten to see 50 different kinds of lockboxes that get yes. put on the door for a, for a potential buyer or buyer's agent to access a home. Yep. Some of them you can't get into, yes. or they're too complicated, or somebody overthought it, or they put the lockbox in the wrong location to where you can't find the lockbox, or you can't get it open, or it sticks, or just, I'm, the possibilities for failure are endless, but yes, easy $40 lockbox from yep. Lowe's or Home Depot. Ours have four numbers, you know, one, you know, slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four. You can set up the combination however you want it. Um, it allows you to reprogram it certain times where we would reprogram we have our own system of the, the, the combos that we put to help us remember it based on the house. Uh, and then all of that goes up onto the, the third party service yes. that handles our, it was called showing time in this area. And so showing time has all of the access instructions. So if a buyer agent contacts through the MLS, hey, we wanna see this house Thursday at 4 p.m. Showing time is negotiating with the seller Selling, uh, sending a text, email, phone call out to the seller. Hey, yep. can you? Is it okay? Can you do this? And the seller's given a thumbs up, thumbs down, um, and so that confirms it. That then and only then is the access instructions uh, sent to the buyer's agent, and they're the only ones who have the combo. So the yep. buyer themselves, they're not going to have the combo because we don't want the security issue yep. of that. But it really streamlines the service. Somebody can go in at two p.m. You know, two a.m. on a Sunday morning. And they can still schedule the thing and have it get sent out. And That's so right. it's it, it keeps uh, us, we have our normal operating hours. Yep. And so this third-party service just streamlines getting th things scheduled, getting them confirmed, all that sort of thing. So yep. that's that's kind of the issue with the lockbox. We do signage all over the place. Yep. Um, you know, corner lot, we'll try to put two for sale signs in. Just high visibility. Um, normally it's one, you know, and then directionals coming in from different areas, kind of your normal traffic flows. I mean, we've had some people, I've had a couple of people that have called me off of signs, you know, oh, yeah. that, that made a big difference. Mm -hmm. But typically that's just helping somebody that's already got their GPS and maybe they're unfamiliar with the city or with the traffic patterns, make sure that they find the last couple of little turns getting in. So, yeah, I would say uh, you know, one thing, just speaking to lockboxes. So uh -huh. because, you know, this video is more for somebody who's picking a realtor, the elements are that you're going to have some real estate agents are going to say, hey, we're going to do this four combination like what we do. Yep. Some of them are going to try to sound really fancy and really secure and so forth by using these Bluetooth lock boxes. And, and some of them are nice, but the problem is, is that certain agents pay for access to them. And so that's one thing that's kind of behind the curtain, if you will, is that the lock box with a combo, everybody can get into it. The other one, you either have to now create a code, a pass for them. You have to go in and um, be able to have a phone with you. You got to do, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of, of jumps through hoops for the agent to get in the door. And I mean, I'm just being honest from my perspective. A lot of times I'm like, yeah, I really hate this house already. And I've already got a negative perspective. It's, it's a, <laughs> it creates a bad impression for yes. anybody who's not in the game, in that particular system. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're sitting right here between the triad, the, the triad on the west and the triangle on the right. Yep. And so they each have their own Bluetooth lock boxes that yep. certain of those agents will pay monthly subscriptions to have access yep. to. So we're, we're showing homes at either one of the spots all the time. Yep. And we're having to navigate these. Well, there's no point in us with it being a 30 miles out of our normal zone yep. to try to have multiple subscriptions. But the, 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 the tactical aspect of getting one-time codes, getting into the lock boxes, it's comp I've, I've walked away from a house yep. with a buyer's agent yep. or with a buyer who would have looked at the house, probably would have liked the house, except we can't get in. And then we yep. can't get in touch with the agent and you call customer service and it's just, it creates a debacle. So yes, it's probably presented as a great selling point. <laughs> in reality, 
a four digit simplified, you know, keep it simple, stupid yep. uh, strategy ends up being better. That's right. Yep. So. yep. But that was, that was one of those things that's like a soft spot on me. I'm like, I really hate these lock boxes. I will say this, in our market at least, uh, Century Lock is one that's used through the triangle. And triangle actually pays for us to have it. So that's not so bad because no, no, no. I at least have access to it. But then you have another one, which I won't mention because I don't like it at all. But some people use it and you can never get in. And then sometimes the battery dies in the lockbox or sometimes your phone doesn't want to work in connection. And if you're, there's even ties to the MLS and if it's not correct, then it won't let you in. And it's just, it's a nightmare. I'm just saying it's a nightmare. And so we have, we've walked away from houses. Me and Cam, I remember being at a house in Greensboro and it was like, I was like, dude, can you get in? And so he schedules it through sometimes to try to see if he can get in. And then I try to schedule it to get in. Neither one of us can get in. And so we just sit walking around the house. So, if you're an agent that does this, and this is just for an agent out there, put a combo box as a backup on the back door right? so that you can get in. And if you want to have that security and all of that, that's great. Do the security thing and then you know, have the combo as a backup on the back door that somebody can get in if they run into that emergency. People have but, lost buyers. They've, oh, 100%. They've reduced the amount of offers they've gotten on a house because they overthought Something mm. as simple as the lockbox. So anyway, exactly. I, we, we, we'll, we heard it. We'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll get off of our soapbox now, okay? <laughs> um, but a lot of the security issues really are handled. I mean, you, you as the homeowner, you still yep. want to get out your valuables, your medications, those sorts of things, you, you know, firearms, get, get those things secured either in a safe or out of the home. That's right. But as far as the security, because you have an agent representing the buyer, they you also have an agent them. representing you. There are some levels of being able to track down things, you know, That's if right. you have any problems come up. So security not as big a deal. Um, we're, you know, we're always going to tell somebody, please get your pets out of the house. Mm -hmm. Don't leave the dog in the backyard. Don't leave the dog in the crate in the living room. Uh, it just gives people this feeling of being unsafe. And a lot of people are afraid of dogs, or they're yeah. allergic to cats, or you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, just don't leave you know weird um, pets in places where. Well, dogs and cats are not weird, but to some snakes people, snakes and reptiles. Yeah, some snakes, reptiles. Houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you could you could certainly have situations where it just it's just distracting. Yeah. Well, I, one thing I was thinking about too is the security. So we're talking about security. Mm -hmm. Everybody has cameras on their house nowadays. Yep. And so there's doorbells, there's whatever you name it. There's yep. fifty of them. But the issue is, is that what happens, and and this is something that we tell people all the time, especially if we're on the listing side, is don't watch your cameras while the mm. buyer's in the house. One. A lot of cameras will, they'll tick or they'll have a blue light or they have something that, so people know you're being watched. Mm, mm. And if you're watching me, number one, I don't feel I can trust you yep. because now you're invading my privacy. Secondly, now I feel like I've got to be overly protective because yep. I don't want to do this. So don't do that. And in, in some cases, just go ahead and take them down. Mm. Don't have them sitting in your house. Don't have them out and all of that. Now, if you want to have one on the doorbell so you can see who's coming in and if they yeah. do or don't, yeah. that's one thing. But For like, Amazon, you know, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But like inside the house or in bedrooms and all this kind mm. of stuff, that's where it gets really weird. Um, and so I've, I've ran into that where I'm like looking around, I see cameras, and I, I look at my buyer. I've said this to them like, don't say anything inside this house. Mm. Everything's set outside. Yeah. Or when we get to your car. Yeah. And so then yeah. they're already like, I got my wall up of right. protection. So right. those are just, that's one big thing. We're talking about security. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's good to last minute, right before the home gets on the market, have one of us do a final walkthrough. That's right. You know, have your agent do a final walkthrough. Have a family member who's has a fresh set of eyes. Do a final walkthrough for that last minute decluttering. Yeah. Okay. Because... You live in the house, right? You're going to leave a wrapper on the counter. You're going to leave, you know, stinky trash in the trash can. You mm -hmm. didn't realize it. How does it smell? How does it look? Those are things that because you live in the house, it's really tough for you to kind of take a step back. Yeah. And so it's really nice to have a second or third opinion of somebody walk through just for the last. You've already done most of the decluttering, right? Mm -hmm. As part of the prep process for your pictures and everything. But you really want it to look the way that it looked in the pictures. That's right. Present it the way that you presented it online. Don't make sure. it something that's different. For sure. And your realtor is going to be handling the agents. You know, you don't have to deal with that. You're not going to have a, a bunch of people hounding you. All of that's going to get cycled and, and screened through the realtor, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. You know, whereas if you're working with a for sale by owner, you could have people talking with you directly or trying to yes. get your business or trying to get you to help them, you know, list the house or whatever. So, um, yeah, a lot of that gets taken care of as far as on the security side. Yeah. Um, and then just, you know, day of the week, we typically like to set it up where something's mm -hmm. going to hit as what they call a coming soon, yep. very early in the week, Monday, Tuesday. Okay. 
a um, couple of days right in there where it's sort of, hey, it's online, but you can't see it quite yet. And then tours start on a Thursday or Friday, kind of right as the, the end of the week is coming. Sometimes we'll run an open house. We'll certainly talk with you about the, the pros and cons of yeah. an open house that first weekend. You know, y your traffic goes up like this, and then it turns around and tapers off. So understand that those first several weekends, you know, are, are going to be the highest probability for having a lot of traffic, good open houses, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's going to kind of become normal. You know, then all of a sudden people are on to the next new listing that's hitting the market, and so it'll taper off a little bit. That's so, right. Yep. Yeah. I, I would say uh, just tap on open house just a little bit because it is something that we, we didn't really have it on the agenda, but I think yeah. it's important. Yeah. Is, you know, when you're doing an open house, when you do it you know, certain times of the day. So I've seen people that have done them late in the afternoon, mm -hmm. you know, like two to four, which I think is the normal kind of standard. Yeah. Sundays are typically the day that people expect. Mm -hmm. Saturdays are the day that most people are trying to come to the house. Um, so like, for instance, we have a seller right now. She's like, oh, well, there's an open house. She had already mentioned there's open houses. And yeah. so she's looking, knowing that <clears throat> most of those are going to be on a Sunday. Um, and they're going to be two to four. But mm -hmm. if you do them in weird times in different places and stuff like that, a lot of times people just don't, they're not the norm. So people don't mm -hmm. think about them. They don't mm -hmm. attend them. Mm -hmm. um, the other side of that is, is that, you know, if you're going to do an open house, make sure that it's actually marketed. Um, so like you can find it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times it's like, oh yeah, we're doing an open house. And then they have somebody sit there, but it's not, you know, they don't put a sign in the front yard that says open house. They don't go around and talk to the neighbors mm. around them mm. and say, hey, we're doing an open house. Come check yeah. the house out. Yeah. They're not putting it on social media. They're not doing, you know, what we'll do is a, ver a video tour of the house that's actually live. And so the agent that's showing the home or is doing the open house is going through and they're like, hey, here's where we're at. This is yeah. what we're doing. So it's getting it out there. People are hearing about it. It's not just, oh, it's, it's in the MLS and that's it. Sure, sure. And open houses, I mean, we're talking behind the curtain here. You need to understand that open houses are benefiting the seller. Yeah. They're also benefiting the agent. Yeah. Okay. And you got some agents that really kind of like, I mean, they push an open house really for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. So you do need to understand. And and why do I say that? So yes, you could very easily have somebody come in to an open house who's seriously interested in the home. Absolutely happens. A lot of times it's your neighbors who always wanted to see inside your house. You know, they're just <laughs> kind of being nosy. But that's okay. They may know somebody who would be interested in buying the home. But right. you also are going to have a realtor, and, and, and we do this, but I, I just want you to know yeah, <laughs> that we do front. this, okay, up front. Somebody's going to come to your house, wow, I just love this house, but you know what? The bedroom's a little too small. Well, that's the point at which we would say, well, are you already working with a realtor? Because we would love to help you find a house right. that does have a master suite that's large enough for what you need to do. And so it, it, it's a win-win for both. I just want to make sure that if you ever work with a realtor and they're like, hey, Open houses are great for you, but you know what? I'm going to really bend over backwards and be this huge sacrifice. I'm going to do an open house for you. You know, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, they're benefiting as much or more than a seller is from an open house. Doesn't totally. mean you don't do them. Uh, I mean, one thing, and we'll, we'll, I'm going to hint at this here. We'll dig into it a little bit more. You can actually do an agent open house. That's right. Which oftentimes is more effective for actually getting the home sold. So we'll talk about that when we do our price drop video. But That's right. Um, yeah, no, I think that hits a, a lot of the yeah. kind of major last minute tips and tricks points, yeah. just I making sure that everything. things are in place. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. We're just continuing to walk through our seller series. Uh, your home has now hit the market. That's where we are. We're going to go into some price drops and then negotiations on contracts, all those yep. sorts of things as we uh, help you walk through the process step by step. So if you have any questions, uh, you can leave it in the description below. You can subscribe. You can uh, like this video. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. See you guys.